Did you ever find a TV show that is so captivating, you wish you could live inside its world? That's the beauty of Hilda. Its setting feels like stepping into a storybook where people are kind, real estate is charming, and the world has a little touch of magic which makes it a perfect setting kind of show. But there's more to Hilda than meets the eye because beyond its eye-catching visuals lies a story filled with depth and heart. However, before we begin, let's set some background for better understanding. Hilda is an awesome show about a young girl named Hilda who lives in this cozy cabin on the edge of a big city called Trollberg. She's got this adorable deer fox named Twig as her sidekick. As the series unfolds, Hilda, Twig, and later her friend Alfer go on all sorts of adventures around the city. They meet new friends like David and Frida, and together, they explore the magical creatures and mysteries that lurk in Trollberg and its surroundings. With that said, let's get right into it. Season 1 The first episode begins with Hilda and Twig embarking on a day of adventure, jumping on rocks by a river and encountering a water spirit that transports them to the other side. As they climb a mountain, a spot wasps flying in the sky and stumble upon a menacing troll rock. Despite Twig's fear, Hilda sketches the troll, but as night falls, it awakens and chases them home. Surprisingly, the troll only wanted the bell on its nose removed, returning Hilda's sketchbook as a gesture of gratitude. However, their peaceful evening is disrupted by threatening notices, leading Hilda to confront the mysterious sender. Later, invisible creatures invade their home, but Hilda bravely fights them off with a broom. After the harrowing home invasion, Johanna's fear prompts the decision to move to Trollberg if another incident occurs. Refusing to uproot their lives, Hilda seeks to negotiate with the invisible creatures and is unexpectedly visited by Alfer, an elf who reveals that their home is in the heart of an elf village. Alfer discloses the elves' hostility, stemming from the Prime Minister's vow to expel Hilda and her mom if elected. Determined to confront the Prime Minister, Hilda seeks assistance from the mayor, who initially rebuffs her until a comical misunderstanding involving his pet cat Angelina prompts his cooperation. Joined by Alfer, Hilda sets out to find the Prime Minister but faces a confrontation with the Prime Minister's cavalry, thwarted by Twig's intervention. When they find the Prime Minister, Hilda tries to reason with him, even promising to make compromises to limit the annoyance she and her mom unintentionally gave the elves. The Prime Minister, however, claims that he can't end the war against them either, only the King can. Disappointed, she leaves. Alfer, however, promises to bring her to the King even though this violates all protocols. Meanwhile, Hilda sits at the edge of a cliff feeling sad as Twig consoles her to cheer up. Despite Hilda's reluctance, Johanna persuades her to consider moving to Trollberg, prompting a visit to explore the town. During their preparations, Hilda discovers a surprise in her hair, tiny mittens from Angelina's kittens. That night, Hilda's sleep is disturbed by the mysterious giant's return, sparking a daring chase. Confronting the giant, she learns he's been stood up by a friend and returns him home, feeling a pinch of empathy for his loneliness. In Trollberg, Hilda's skepticism deepens as she encounters unfamiliar faces at school, including Frida and David. Despite the welcoming atmosphere, Hilda remains unconvinced that Trollberg is the right fit for her. Back home, the woodman's deceit about the giant piques Hilda's curiosity, leading her on a quest for answers. She learns of Jorgen, the last guardian giant, and his solitary vigil over the earth. Touched by Jorgen's difficulty, her compassion compels her to delve deeper into the mysteries of the giant's disappearance. The next day, Alpha escorts Hilda to meet the Elf King, whose castle sits atop the snowy peak. Attempting a shortcut on a waff, Hilda is thrown off but lands safely near the castle. Upon seeing her, the Elf King panics and retreats, triggering a snow slide that reveals a hidden cave. Venturing inside, Hilda discovers the shocking truth. The mountain is a slumbering female giant and the cave is her ear. As the giant awakens, Hilda's actions inadvertently save the collapse in royal palace. Realizing the giant is Jorgen's long-lost friend, Hilda confesses her earlier words to Jorgen. Fortunately, Jorgen arrives in time to catch her, reuniting with his girlfriend as she reveals the fate of the other giants. Grateful for her intervention, the Elf King agrees to peace terms, allowing Hilda and Johanna to coexist peacefully with the elves. However, tragedy strikes as Jorgen accidentally destroys Hilda's home while rejoining the other giants in space. Homeless and empathizing with the elves' circumstances, Hilda reluctantly decides to move to Trollberg with her mom. Alpha ensures their smooth transition, accompanying them to their new home as they bid farewell to the woodman and embark on a new chapter in their lives, joined by Twig and Alpha. The Bird Parade episode opens with Hilda, Twig, and Alpha finding themselves in a tent inside Hilda's bedroom, startled by Johanna's sudden entrance. Insisting Hilda join her in town, Johanna leads them to Trollberg, busy with preparations for the annual Bird Parade. Along the way, they encounter a group of mischievous kids led by Trevor. 
who Johanna encourages Hilda to befriend. However, Hilda soon realizes the kid's idea of fun involves harmful pranks, culminating in an act of cruelty towards a raven. Disturbed by their behavior, she intervenes and discovers the raven can speak. Fleeing with the injured bird, she seeks refuge at home, where she assists the raven in seeking help from Alpha while keeping him hidden from Johanna. The raven, shaken and with no memory, recalls a vague mission involving a statue of a mysterious figure. With Johanna's insistence to attend the parade, Hilda is torn between her duty to the raven and her mother's plans. Learning from Johanna that the parade honors the great raven, a symbol of good fortune, Hilda realizes the injured bird may be the revered figure. Rushing home to share her revelation, she discovers the raven has vanished, leaving her with unanswered questions. As Johanna and Hilda clear the city for the raven, navigating with Johanna's guidance, the raven and Alpha narrowly evade an encounter, stumbling upon the statue by chance. However, their discovery is ruined by Trevor's presence, who seizes the raven to vindicate himself. Arriving moments too late, Hilda and Johanna are sad to find the statue empty. Hilda, determined to search from a vantage point, ascends a bell tower as the parade's commencement looms. Meanwhile, Trevor attempts to coerce the raven into speaking, prompting Alpha's intervention. Despite Alpha's efforts, Trevor recaptures the raven, threatening to cast him into the river if he remains silent. From her elevated position, Hilda observes Trevor's cruelty and springs into action as he teeters on the brink of an unthinkable act. As Alpha startles Trevor, Hilda plunges into the water, appealing to the raven's true identity as the Great Raven. Rekindling his memories, the raven transforms into his majestic form, revealing his humble origins as a thunderbird mistaken for a deity centuries ago. Despite his true nature, the raven chooses to bring hope to the townsfolk, unleashing his lightning to announce his return. With the parade reignited, the great raven carries Hilda on his back, delivering her to her mother's side as they witness the spectacle together. Hilda, David, and Frida embark on their first Sparrow Scouts challenge, beautifying the Trollberg city park. However, their efforts are destroyed overnight by Vitra, plant-like creatures upset of the disturbance. The Vitra steal Frida's badge sash, starting a chase into underground tunnels where the Vitra reside. However, Hilda intervenes, striking a deal to rescue the Vitra's trapped friends. Together, they prevent disaster at the mulching machine, saving the Vitra just in time. Although they miss out on earning a badge, the experience proves memorable. As David goes to sleep that night, a rock that he found earlier begins to move. The episode begins with the trolls outside Trollberg venturing into the city through a Vitra tunnel. At the Alberg school's parents' night, a statue honoring the troll slayer is unveiled, attended by Hilda and her mother, Johanna. Meanwhile, David and Frida present their projects as Alfred discreetly observes school life. A mishap occurs when David's rock moves, leading to suspicion falling on Hilda. Freda fears Ms. Halbrim may want Hilda transferred due to behavioral issues. As chaos erupts from the troll rock's movement, Hilda plans to discreetly remove it. Despite efforts, the troll causes havoc in the classroom, leading to a frantic pursuit. Eventually, Hilda captures the baby troll, reuniting it with its mother and saving the school. Ms. Halbrim permits Hilda's continued enrollment, acknowledging her heroism. Hilda, Frida, and David pursue a mysterious girl in Trollbur who seems to cause David's nightmares. They discover she is Mara, a nightmare spirit, hiding in Holdrewood Forest. Mara taunts them, but they learn her weakness from a book. They set a trap, with Hilda offering to face her fears in exchange for leaving David alone. Mara conjures a nightmare about Hilda's fear of biking, but is interrupted by David's bravery. Acknowledging David's newfound courage, Mara spares him, no longer finding him fun to haunt. Inspired by David's bravery, Hilda decides to conquer her fear of biking with Frida and David's help. Hilda, David, and Frida embark on a mission to earn their body badge by collecting plant specimens. They head to the park and quickly find some common plants. However, Hilda suggests searching for a rare blue nettle instead. David hesitates as he believes the area is haunted, but reluctantly agrees to lead them there. Upon arrival, Hilda realizes the supposed ghostly voices are actually elves, invisible to David and Frida. The elves attack the trio, capturing David in the process. Hilda and Frida rush back to Hilda's house, where Frida begins the paperwork to see the elves. Alpha is surprised to learn of other elves in Trollberg and realizes they must be from the lost clan of the northern counties. He explains to Hilda and Frida the history of the Braga and Aldrich families, detailing their conflict over a plot of land known as No Elf's Land. Alpha hopes to settle the ancient dispute by having the Braga sign a contract to end their exile. However, the Braga refused due to their aversion to paperwork, stemming from the incident with the old contract. Martel, recognizing Alpha as a member of the Aldrich family, demands he fight all ten Braga rabbit warriors as retribution. Hilda agrees to fight alongside Alpha, but Frida intervenes, seeking a loophole in the contract instead. 
Bartel gives her one day to find a solution, holding David as a hostage until then. Back at Hilda's house, Frida discovers the contract contains an escape clause. It's rendered void if destroyed by the fire of a lindworm. Alpha is hesitant about the plan since lindworms are rare and averse to paperwork, but the girls see no other option. They visit the library and learn that only one lindworm still lives in Trollberg on a small island in the bay. In the harbor, Alpha instructs Hilda on how to summon a water spirit by blowing on a conch shell. The water spirit obliges and gives them a ride to the island. Meanwhile, David finds himself getting along well with the elves. On the island, the girls and Alpha find the lindworm asleep in the middle of her garden. Hilda attempts to hold the contract close to the lindworm's nose as she exhales fire, but she accidentally wakes the creature up. The lindworm is displeased to see another elf attempting to get out of contract and threatens to eat the humans to emphasize her refusal to burn contracts. Thinking quickly, Alpha offers the lindworm something in return, and Hilda promises the lindworm the urban flowers they found earlier that morning. Intrigued, the lindworm agrees to trade and destroys the contract. With their mission accomplished, the group returns to the Braga and presents them with the burned remains of the contract. Bartel, although feeling conflicted about his exile being over, relinquishes no elf's land to Alpha. That night, the kids and Alpha celebrate the resolution with the Braga. Later, David attempts to audition for the Warblers again with Hilda's encouragement. However, mishaps occur, leading to another failed attempt. Meanwhile, Hilda finds Twig alone due to Johanna's new job at a hardware store. While exploring the library for solutions, they discover a hidden room with spell books. Hilda learns about tide mice, magical creatures that aid success, and decides to summon one for David. Despite the librarian's restrictions, she copies the necessary spell. This sets the stage for Hilda's attempt to help her friends through magical means. Hilda's success with the tide mice extends to her mother, Johanna, who secures a new job after Hilda performs the ritual for her. However, alarming signs begin to manifest in both David and Johanna, indicating an enchantment. Frida expresses her concerns to Hilda, prompting them to investigate. They discover the dark truth behind the tide mice. After a 30-day trial, they will steal the souls of those they've aided. With the deadline approaching, they find a solution in the library's spell book, a counter ritual. Determined to undo the harm they've caused, Hilda, Frida, and Alpha plan to perform the ritual during the Warbler concert the next evening, hoping to save their friends from the tide mice's grasp before it's too late. During the Warbler concert, David impresses the audience while Johanna begins experiencing the consequences of the spell. As Moonrise approaches, Hilda initiates the counterspell, causing the tide mice to become visible to everyone and incite panic. With time running out, Frida and Hilda swiftly capture the mice and rush Johanna and David to the tide pool where the ritual began. Hilda reveals the truth to Johanna as they perform the final spell. Despite a moment of danger when Johanna enters a trance while driving, Hilda manages to steer the car to safety. Once at the tide pool, they release the tide mice, ending the enchantment. Hilda apologizes for the ordeal, but as they depart, unnoticed by the others, the tide mice cling to her, hinting at potential future consequences. After receiving a distress call from Frida, Hilda, and David rush to her house to find her room in disarray. Frida is distressed by the mess, fearing it will distract from her class presidency campaign. Hilda proposes they clean the room and set up a surveillance camera. With David's help, they tidy up and install the camera, The Frida notices her missing favorite book, The Legend of Great King Condon. Hilda reassures her it will reappear. The next day, the room is messy again. Reviewing the footage, they discover Frida causing the mess herself. Frida confesses that her room used to clean itself overnight, but her friends insist it's not normal. A disagreement ensues between David and Frida, leading to a playful wrestling match between them. Hilda remains convinced of a ghost's involvement, speculating that it used to clean Frida's room nightly until quitting. While David assures Frida she can adapt to a messier room, she worries over the perception of her untidiness affecting her campaign. Struggling with mirrors, she makes several mistakes, prompting her to consider dropping out, but Hilda vows to help rectify the situation. At the library, they learn that ghosts often retrieve personal items from their past lives. The librarian identifies the missing book's owner as Craigie Williams and directs them to his burial site. Equipped with a book and summoning symbols, Hilda prepares to confront the ghosts despite the potential dangers involved. That evening, Hilda, Frida, and David journey to Street Guglo's Cemetery. Another spat erupts between Frida and David, prompting Hilda to remind David of Frida's past help. Summoning Craigie Williams' ghost, they learn he ceased cleaning Frida's room after failing to find her beloved book. Craigie directs them to his sister Engelbjort, suspecting she possesses the book. Roused from her grave, Engelbjort and Craigie quarrel, leading to Engelbjort challenging the trio to a wrestling match for the book's return. 
Despite their numerical advantage and Frida's wrestling skills, they lose as Engeljort resorts to ghostly cheating tactics. As dawn approaches, the ghosts must return to their graves. Seizing the opportunity, Hilda occupies Engeljort's grave, demanding the return of Frida's book. Engeljort begrudgingly complies, offering the squire's folly instead. However, Frida fails to convince Craigie to resume cleaning her room. Returning home disappointed, Hilda takes a bath, feeling dejected by her failure. At school, Frida opts out of her class president's speech. Finding her disheartened at home, Frida and Hilda engage in a heated argument, airing grievances before David intervenes. Upon their departure, Anis emerges from under Frida's bed, robbing another book, adding to her troubles. Hilda, initially reluctant due to the storm, changes her mind when it turns to snow. However, Johanna's call urging her to stay indoors alters her plans. As the snowstorm worsens, the Great Raven seeks refuge at Hilda's house, suspecting whether spirits at play. Concerned for her favorite meteorologist, Victoria Van Gale, Hilda decides to visit her at the Trollberg weather station to seek advice and ensure her safety. She enlists David and the Raven to accompany her on the journey. At the weather station, Hilda, David, and the Raven encounter Victoria Van Gale, who initially seems surprised but welcomes them nonetheless. Despite her assurances that everything is fine, her eccentric behavior raises suspicion among David and the Raven. Victoria dismisses an alarm and denies access to certain areas, attributing it to personal untidiness. Her accidental activation of a lever causing a small thunderstorm outside adds to their concerns. Despite Hilda's admiration, the others remain skeptical of Victoria's actions. Victoria reluctantly admits to experimenting with a weather-controlling machine and inadvertently attracting more weather spirits than anticipated. Hilda proposes using the machine to redirect the storm, but it malfunctions. As the snowstorm worsens, Hilda resolves to negotiate with the weather spirits directly. With the assistance of the Great Raven, she approaches them and successfully mediates their dispute, leading to the calming of the storm. Meanwhile, David investigates Victoria's suspicious behavior and unlocks the locked room in her absence. Hilda confronts Victoria about the captive baby weather spirit, causing the enraged father to attack the weather station. Hilda sends David home with the Raven while she tries to calm the angered spirit. Investigating further, Hilda discovers the captive weather spirit in a locked room, revealing Victoria's deceit. As the station collapses, seemingly trapping Hilda inside, she is rescued by the enraged weather spirit but ends up far from Trollberg after being dropped in the woods. Stranded in the wilderness, Hilda encounters the Woodman and a group of playful elves. Mocked by the Woodman for her city life, she seeks assistance to find her way back to Trollberg. Barch offers to help Hilda send a message to Johanna, but the Woodman's losses in elf poker result in Hilda being bet and subsequently lost to a forest giant. The giant takes her to his tree hollow, filled with collected objects, leaving Hilda trapped high above the ground. Barch promptly delivers Hilda's letter to the post office, initiating a rapid chain of couriers that ensures its swift arrival at Hilda's house in Trollberg. Alpha intercepts the letter upon its delivery. Concerned about Hilda's absence, Johanna arrives home anxiously only to be reassured by Alpha, who informs her of the letter's arrival. Despite her relief, Johanna remains wary of the woodman's involvement. Alpha, determined to find Hilda, resolves to trace the letter's origin with the help of Twig. Hilda reluctantly aids Woodman in retrieving his lost items from the forest giant's tree, realizing he orchestrated her capture for his own gain. With Woodman's guidance, they narrowly evade the returning giant's notice. However, their escape results in Woodman losing his collected belongings and disorienting himself in the forest. Now facing the same situation as Hilda, Woodman must rely on her assistance to navigate their way back to safety. As Alpha competes in a high-stakes poker game with the elves to obtain Hilda's whereabouts, Hilda and Woodman seek refuge in an unusual house that seems to cater to their every desire. However, they soon realize that the house is enchanted, trapping them inside with no means of escape. Despite their attempts to leave, the house distorts reality, presenting them with impossible architecture and endless loops. As they struggle to break free, Alpha's determination to find Hilda intensifies, driving him to win the critical information from the elves. Alpha, Twig, and the Great Raven arrive at the enchanted house, but inadvertently become trapped inside as well. Together with Hilda and Woodman, they devise a plan to overload the house's ability to conjure objects by demanding more than it can provide. As the house becomes overwhelmed, Hilda requests a door leading back to Trollberg, successfully escaping with her friends. Despite losing the comforts the house provided, Hilda realizes that Trollberg has truly become her home, although she cherishes her connection to the wilderness. Woodman bids farewell, reminding Hilda that the wilderness will always be a part of her and invites her to visit if she ever returns. As the camping trip approaches, Hilda worries about her lack of Sparrow Scout badges and the absence of Frida, who has been spending time with a mysterious new friend named Kelly. 
When Hilda and Johanna encounter in this, Johanna warns Hilda about their mischievous nature and the possibility of a good reason for its banishment. Meanwhile, the town is on edge due to reports of a mysterious beast. Concerned about both Frida and the Nis, Hilda sets out to uncover the truth behind these strange occurrences. As she prepares for her camping trip, Johanna expresses concern about the safety of going outdoors amidst reports of the Black Hound. Despite her mother's worries, Hilda remains undeterred. However, their plans are further disrupted when all the snacks Johanna bought for the trip mysteriously vanish. Hilda, determined to address the situation with Frida, finds herself blocked by Kelly's presence at Frida's house. Disheartened by Frida's absence, Hilda encounters Tantu, the banished Niska, and offers him shelter in her home. Tantu reveals the existence of the nowhere space within her house, where missing items are stored. However, chaos ensues when another Nis clashes with Tantu, resulting in their expulsion by Johanna. As the camping trip begins, Johanna briefly spots the Black Hound while driving Hilda to the campsite. Concerned, she shares her sighting with Raven Leader, who reassures her of their safety. Meanwhile, Frida contemplates joining the camp, but is persuaded by Kelly to stay with her instead. At the camp, Raven Leader initiates a scavenger hunt in the Holderwoods, urging everyone to stick together. However, Hilda and David break away from the group when they encounter Tantu in the woods. They spend time with him until dark, during which Tantu shares more about his past dwelling. Despite Raven Leader's search, Hilda promises to return later that night to bring Tantu snacks. Under the threat of the Black Hound's presence, the Mara and Kelly scatter, leaving Hilda, David, Frida, and the Hound in tense silence. After narrowly escaping the Black Hound, Hilda, Frida, and David return to the Sparrow Scouts camp, where they find Raven Leader awaiting them. Shocked by the sighting of the dangerous creature, Raven Leader decides to end the camp early. The Scouts pack up and head home, with Frida apologizing to David for her previous behavior. Despite her determination to find Tantu, Raven Leader prevents Hilda from pursuing her quest. Johanna and Hilda give Frida a ride home, where Hilda sketches Tantu to aid in the search. Still hesitant to admit she didn't earn any badges, Hilda accepts Frida's offer to help her earn one. The next day, David and Frida convince Johanna to let Hilda join them in collecting items for the Sparrow Scouts' jumble sale. While out, they encounter members of the Safety Patrol, searching for the Black Hound. They also visit Kelly's house, where Frida helps Kelly retrieve her stuffed toy, emphasizing the importance of friendship. Meanwhile, Hilda continues her search for Tantu, encountering several Nis named Tantu who claim innocence in their banishments. Caught up in her quest, Hilda loses track of time and misses the opportunity to contribute to the jumble sale, causing her to miss out on sharing credit with Frida and David. As the news reports the Black Hound's attacks, Alpha identifies it as a Bargus, unusual for being in Trollberg. Hilda believes it's lost and scared rather than inherently evil. Determined to distract herself from the badge ceremony, she resumes her search for Tantu. Eventually, she finds his former home, but the owner insists Tantu deserved banishment. When she reunites with Tantu, he maintains his innocence, leaving Hilda conflicted. Tantu discovers the hound in the scout hall's nowhere space during the badge ceremony, causing chaos. He leads Hilda into space to protect her, but the hound pursues them. Chased by the hound, Hilda and Tantu navigate through nowhere space, passing through Frida's house where Hilda finds her missing book. They eventually reach Hilda's house, where the Nis confronts the Hound, recognizing it as her old pet, Jellybean. Learning Jellybean's backstory, Hilda helps reunite him with his owner, calming him down. With the Nis's help, Jellybean regurgitates the people he had eaten. As the Seiki Patrol arrives to capture the Hound, a plan to lure Jellybean out of the city. Johanna, convinced by Hilda, joins the effort, leading to a chaotic chase towards the town gate with Jellybean in pursuit. After Jellybean causes chaos on the car, it veers off the road toward the city wall. In a desperate move, the Nis send the car into the nowhere space outside the city. Jellybean and his owner disappear, while Hilda, Johanna, and Tantu emerge safely on the other side. Back home, Johanna presents Hilda with a homemade badge proud of her daughter's bravery. Tantu now lives with them in the nowhere space. Alpha is intrigued by their adventure, seeing it as a new era for elf exploration. Freyda and David plan to remove Hilda's unofficial badge. Meanwhile, Jellybean and his owner encounter elves and the woodman near Hilda's old house ruins, learning of her past exploits. Season 2 The Troll Circle episode begins with Hilda and Twig chasing a peculiar creature carrying elf house. During their pursuit, they stumble upon a circle of petrified trolls, a surprising sight so close to the city. They manage to retrieve the elf house but end up outside the city at a farmhouse. The farmer informs them about recent troll activity, prompting Hilda to rush home. She drops off the elf house on the way and lies to her mom about her whereabouts. During dinner, representatives from the safety patrol visit to congratulate Hilda on winning an essay contest about her troll encounter. 
Despite her surprise, Johanna is proud of Hilda's achievement. The day starts with Hilda being picked up by the safety patrol in a Zeppelin, with Alfer secretly joining. Eric gives a speech at the Alberg school before departing with Hilda and Gerda. However, the patrol disappoints Hilda as they encounter no danger except for a near crash caused by weather spirits. Their boredom ends when they meet a bellkeeper who saw a troll stealing his sandwich. Remembering the petrified trolls, Hilda leads them to the site. Eric's photo op delays them, and they reach the trolls as the sun sets, awakening them. Amidst the chaos, Eric's attempts to scare off the trolls only provoke them further. Gerda's defense fails, and the trolls destroy their car. Hilda and Eric seek refuge at the farm, hiding underneath the building while the farmer inadvertently helps fend off the trolls. They escape into a nearby Vitra tunnel. In the tunnels, Hilda confronts Eric for his reckless actions, but he reveals his intent to provoke the trolls for publicity. Disillusioned, Hilda and Eric reunite with Gerda and return to Trollberg safely. Later, Hilda realizes Eric will manipulate the truth in his report, but Alpha assures her the full story will be revealed. Frustrated by the street closures, Hilda seeks help from the Rat King to discredit Eric Alberg. In exchange, she must fetch a cod sandwich from the Salty Maiden. Unexpectedly, she encounters the Woodman there, embroiled in a confrontation with sailors after winning a game. Despite her efforts to defuse the situation, both she and Woodman are thrown into the trash. However, Hilda manages to obtain the sandwich for the Rat King. Woodman reveals his plan to search for the Drogen spirits of drowned sailors to offer them solace. Hilda volunteers to join him as he needs her assistance to sail his newly won boat. She manages to rally the weather spirit to create a storm, allowing them to encounter the Drogen ship. However, upon boarding, they discover the Drogen have no intention of returning to land and instead plan to Shanghai them into their crew. As Hilda and Woodman face the threat of being thrown overboard, a draw named Nicholas suggests a race as a means of winning their freedom. Initially at a disadvantage, Hilda's apology to the weather spirit earns their favor, shifting the tides of the race. Despite winning the race and reaching the harbor first, the Drogden continue to pursue Hilda and Woodman through Trollberg, causing chaos. With Eric Alberg's attention drawn to the commotion, Hilda devises a plan to lead Drogden to the cemetery. There she uses a rune stick to summon the ghosts of the graveyard residents, reuniting them with their long-lost relatives among the Drogden. As the Drogden disappear into the graves with their loved ones, Eric Alberg takes credit for freeing Trollberg from the Draven threat. Despite her efforts, Hilda is unable to uncover any secrets about Alberg to discredit him, realizing the challenge ahead of her. Hilda and Frida embark on a thrilling adventure through the library's secret passages, uncovering hidden rooms and ancient spell books along the way. Eventually, they stumble upon the legendary Witch's Tower, where they witness the librarian engaging in a tense conversation with the Committee of Three. They learn that the librarian has a limited time to retrieve the long overdue book, The Skeleton Whisperer, from a borrower named Matilda Pilfist. Failure to do so will result in her being cast into the void of no return. Realizing the seriousness of the situation, Hilda and Frida reveal themselves to return the card with Matilda's name. The committee, shocked by the presence of non witches in their tower, considers throwing them into the void. To avoid this fate, the librarian enlists Hilda and Frida's help in retrieving the book before time runs out. With the clock ticking, the trio sets off on a mission to save the librarian from her impending doom. The trio embarks on a perilous journey through the maze, encountering various challenges along the way. With Frida's intellect and Hilda's determination, they overcome each obstacle, eventually reaching Matilda Pilfist's residence. Inside, they discover that Matilda is an elderly lady, and the fearsome creature outside is actually her gentle gardener, Eldred. Matilda reveals that the missing book was consumed by her familiar, Cornelius. After retrieving the book from Cornelius, Matilda teleports them back to the Witch's Tower, where they narrowly meet the deadline and save the librarian from the void of no return. Grateful for their assistance, Matilda commends Hilda for her resourcefulness and courage despite not being a witch. The librarian, whose name is Keza, learns to embrace her role as the keeper of books, finding pride in her unique contribution to the magical world. Despite Matilda's revelation about Hilda's lack of potential as a witch, the trio manages to escape the void creature's grasp using Frida's resourcefulness and Hilda's determination. With quick thinking and teamwork, they contain the creature and save Witch Tower from destruction. Matilda recognizes Frida's potential as a witch and offers to train her, with Hilda serving as her familiar. Although initially taken aback, Hilda accepts this new role, and the trio decides to celebrate their victory with tea and board games at Matilda's house. During a camping trip with the Sparrow Scouts, Hilda, Frida, and David venture off course to find the Screaming Stones. David's fear hinders their progress, leading to delays and ultimately forcing them to spend the night outdoors. 
Separated from his friends, David stumbles upon a cave inhabited by Vikings led by Torgon, seeking the medallion of Sigurd for courage. Agreeing to be their messenger, David witnesses a brutal clash between the Vikings and their rivals, the Knudsen clan. After Torgon's victory, David gains possession of the medallion, experiencing newfound bravery. However, the moral implications of the battle weigh heavily on him as he grapples with the consequences of his actions. The medallion grants David fearlessness, leading to bold actions like jumping off a waterfall and confronting a bear. However, Frida and Hilda are uneasy with his newfound bravery. At the Screaming Stones, they witness a creature reviving the dead Knudsen clan. David reveals his involvement in the battle and the reanimated corpses, prompting concern. Seeking to warn Torgun, they witness a second clash between the Vikings and the Knudsen clan. Despite their fearlessness, the Vikings are defeated due to recklessness, resulting in Torgun and his men, including David, being slain. Consequently, Frida and Hilda seek help from the creature at the swamp to revive David. The creature, revealed to be Sigurd, the medallion's original owner, explains the medallion's curse. It perpetuates conflict, leading to eternal battles. Hilda persuades Sigurd to end the cycle, and he provides the potion to revive David and Torgun's men. Surprisingly, they take the revelation lightly, opting to enjoy life rather than dwell on the past. David returns to his former fearful self, much to Frida and Hilda's relief. Sigurd allows Torgun to use the potion, leading to lighthearted antics among the Vikings. With David restored and the conflict resolved, Hilda, Frida, and David resume their camping trip, thankful for their adventure's peaceful conclusion. As Hilda, David, and Frida explore the forest during their bird-watching expedition, they encounter the destructive force of urban development encroaching on nature. However, their journey leads them to Victoria Van Gale, who is transformed from an antagonist into a protector of wildlife. Victoria invites them into her home, a windmill, where she explains her newfound dedication to preserving the environment. Over tea and cookies, they discuss conservation efforts and Victoria's plans to create an animal sanctuary. During their visit, Hilda notices a niss in the windmill, indicating a positive change in the atmosphere. As David's suspicions about Victoria persist, he and Hilda stumble upon a secret room in the windmill where Victoria has been working on a mysterious project. They are attacked by a creature, but are saved by Victoria, who reveals it to be her own Nissy, created to assist her. Impressed by Victoria's ingenuity, Frida eagerly joins their efforts to help despite David's skepticism and the friction between him and the Nis. Meanwhile, Victoria becomes intrigued by Hilda's experiences with nowhere space. Later, David discovers hidden documents in Victoria's kitchen, raising new doubts about her intentions. Despite this, Victoria offers gifts to the children as thanks for their help. As they leave, Frida realizes she hasn't chosen a book yet, while Hilda, fond of two caterpillar-like creatures from Victoria's collection, rushes home for dinner. David, after discovering Victoria's plans through the documents, faces an attack from her Nissan home. The Nissan absconds with most of the documents, leaving David with only one crucial page. Unable to leave his house, David recalls Hilda's advice about Niss and makes an offering to the Niss in his home, securing a ride through nowhere space in exchange for Greece. Reaching Hilda's room, they realize Victoria seeks to harness the power of nowhere space with the help of an artificial Niss. Time is of the essence, prompting Tantu to grant Hilda and David permission for a one-time use of nowhere space to thwart Victoria's plans. With urgency driving them, they prepare to confront Victoria and put an end to her dangerous scheme. Frida is captured and tied up by Victoria to prevent interference, as she activates her machine, which breaches nowhere space on a massive scale. Victoria reveals her plan to colonize. Nowhere space, but Tantu realizes the catastrophic consequences of such a breach. Meanwhile, David attempts to free Frida, but is attacked by the Nis. In the chaos, the machine malfunctions, causing a second breach within nowhere space. Hilda urges Victoria to leave, but she is paralyzed by the failure of her plan. As David manages to free Frida, she kicks the Nis into the breach, closing it. Tantu rescues Hilda as Victoria is consumed by the second breach. Despite disappointment in Victoria's unchanged nature, Hilda finds solace in the windmill, becoming a sanctuary for animals. The episode concludes with Victoria's fate left uncertain in an unknown location. The Sparrow Scouts are at Goral Gardens to observe the annual migration of the WAF. Hilda and Frida discuss the mysterious nature of the WAF and the significance of a white WAF indicating strong magic. Suddenly, a nearby tower bell rings unexpectedly, causing chaos among the WAF. So crash to the ground, but the Scouts helps them back into the air. Later at home, Hilda learns from her mom about a project she's struggling with. In her room, Bartell of the Lost Clan visits, expressing concern about the disruptive bell ringing affecting their lives and livestock. Tantu, joining the discussion, shares how Nis are also disturbed. While Bartell considers drastic measures, Hilda opts to speak with the bellkeeper first to resolve the issue peacefully. 
Hilda discovers that the bell tower has been automated, upsetting her further. The human bell keeper reveals that all towers will soon be controlled by a central system to ring bells constantly, following Eric Alberg's orders to deter trolls, rendering him unemployed. Determined to stop this, Hilda takes a blueprint of the tower from her mom's project materials. Sheil, along with David, Frida, Bartel, Alfer, and Tantu, devise a plan. During the tower's ceremony, the Lost Clan will attack to distract the safety patrol. Tantu will use nowhere space to let Hilda and Frida sabotage the control system, with David standing guard. They plan to execute it during Alberg's speech, dubbing it Operation Deer Fox Thunder Team. On the day of the ceremony, Hilda convinces her mom to attend, then joins her friends to execute their plan. They successfully sabotage the main system, but discover it backup. Frida suggests disabling the bells from the top control panel. With help from the sympathetic bell keeper, they reach the room, but it's too late to shut down the system. Thinking quickly, Hilda maxes out the bells, causing them to short out. However, a bell dislodges, trapping Alberg. Hilda apologizes to her mom for missing the ceremony. The Lost Clan celebrates and peace returns. During bell testing, a bell awakens something beneath Cauldron Island. Hilda, Frida, and David learn about ships sinking due to a Lindworm attack, but suspect another creature, the Sea Serpent, is responsible. Hilda discovers Woodman's head floating in the water and learns the truth from him. Despite Johanna's disappointment over Hilda's absence, the trio sets out to save the Lindworm and Woodman's body. They concoct a plan to prove the Lindworm's innocence and confront the Sea Serpent. Along the way, Frida connects with the Lindworm through a spell, gaining vital information. Despite skepticism from Olberg, they persist in their quest to clear the Lindworm's name and stop the Sea Serpent's attacks. Hilda, Frida, and David investigate ship attacks on Cauldron Island. They discover that Eric Alberg modified a sunken bell to ring automatically, causing the disturbances. Meanwhile, Alpha and David encounter the Lindworm, who refuses to leave without a battle. Alpha devises a plan involving the Lost Clan to allow the Lindworm to fulfill her code, but the plan backfires when the Lost Clan attacks for real. Underwater, the girls find a ship graveyard and learn of a young Kraken being wrongly blamed for the attacks. Frida bonds with the Kraken and discovers they must return to Cauldron Island to find the true culprit. On Cauldron Island, chaos ensues as the Lindworm battles the Lost Clan while Alberg's fleet arrives and attacks. Amidst the conflict, a harpoon pierces the ground, causing the island to shake and reveal its true nature as the head of an adult Kraken. Hilda realizes the underwater bell awakened the Kraken prematurely. The Kraken retaliates, destroying the fleet but sparing wooden ships to feed her offspring. Hilda tries to communicate with the Kraken, revealing the ship's graveyard's existence. Frida bonds with the Kraken, conveying their message. Despite Alberg's final attack, the Kraken prevails, breaking the bell and ensuring her children's survival. Returning home, Hilda faces Johanna's disappointment for lying and is grounded indefinitely. Grounded at home, Hilda notices a doppelganger chased by a strange creature. Witnessing her neighbor, Mr. Ossenfeld, vanish and reappear, she investigates a package downstairs containing old magazines. Opening one catapults her 50 years into the past. There, she discovers multiple versions of Mr. Ossenfeld and follows them to a nightclub called Mirage. Inside, they observe a man engrossed in the Trollberg Digest. He shares a distressing evening with a girl, but they part ways sorrowfully. This experience deeply affects Mr. Ossenfeld, leaving Hilda intrigued by the mysteries of the past. In the present, Hilda and Mr. Ossenfeld confront the consequences of altering the past. They encounter multiple versions of themselves and witness the joyful outcome of Mr. Ossenfeld's altered past. However, their actions attract a colossal, worm-like creature that threatens them. Through portals created by the creature, they glimpse Mr. Ostenfeld's life with the woman, Tildy, leading up to the present. Hilda realizes the woman's identity and the impact of their meddling with time. As the creature continues to menace them, Hilda faces the challenge of escaping its grasp and grappling with the repercussions of their temporal interventions. As the time worm closes in on Hilda, her future self sacrifices to distract it, allowing Hilda and the last Mr. Ostenfeld copy to flee to the future using the magazines. However, the worm pursues them relentlessly. Despite her efforts to escape through its portals, the creature persists in its pursuit. Hilda finds herself back in her own time, witnessing her mother's concerns about their relationship. Seeking refuge, Hilda runs to Tildy's house, where she learns about the Time Worm and its mission to eradicate remnants of the old timeline. Tildy confesses her role in enchanting the magazines, regretting her actions. To protect Hilda, the alternate Tildy and Ostenfeld choose to sacrifice themselves to erase the new timeline. By destroying the original magazine, all traces of the time-traveling events are undone, restoring the timeline to its original state. Back home, Hilda reunites with Ostenfeld, who has no memory of their adventure due to Tildy's decision. Hilda and her mom reconcile and life returns to normal. 
However, Alpha remains unsettled by the events, struggling with the memories of their encounters with alternate versions of themselves. The Deer Fox episode begins with Twig having a peculiar dream, followed by a day of disappointments as he's left behind by Hilda, forgotten by Johanna, and excluded from an adventure with David, Frida, and Alpha. Their mission to retrieve David's stolen shoes from a ghost fails. That night, Twig experiences his dream again, but this time, he finds himself trapped in a transparent box. Waking to a mysterious blue glow near the mountains, Twig ventures out of Trollberg. Seeking shelter from the rain in a cave, he encounters a troll and hastily departs. The next day, Hilda and Johanna embark on a search for Twig, aided by information from the Lost Clan about Twig's departure from the city. They surmise he might have returned to their old cabin in the wilderness. Meanwhile, Twig faces challenges in the wild, including encountering a wolf while attempting to catch food. Amidst the remains of their old home, he discovers a poignant reminder of his bond with Hilda in an old photograph. As Hilda and Johanna approach their former dwelling, memories resurface of the day they first met Twig during a rescue from a landslide, where despite Hilda's efforts to help, Twig fled upon Johanna's arrival. Hilda and Johanna, guided by an elf, head towards the area where Twig was last seen. Meanwhile, Twig navigates perilous terrain evading the persistent wolf and crossing a river. Back at Woodman's house, they seek counsel but find little information about deer foxes. However, Woodman's advice prompts Johanna to revisit the chasm where Hilda and Twig first bonded. Flashing back, they recall how Twig saved Hilda from a fall, strengthening their friendship. In the present, Hilda spots the same mysterious glow from the past, deducing Twig's location. Crossing the chasm, they encounter the wolf, prompting Twig's timely intervention. Hilda devises a plan to outsmart the wolf, ultimately leading to their safety. Grateful, Hilda extends her apologies to Twig for the ordeal. Following the glow, Hilda and Johanna discover Twig's original herd of deer foxes preparing to depart to their dimension. Twig recounts his past dilemma of choosing between aiding Hilda or joining his family, ultimately opting to stay with her. Understanding Twig's attachment, Hilda tearfully bids him farewell. However, Twig soon returns, realizing his place is with Hilda. As they return home amidst falling snow, they encounter the ghost again and reclaim David's shoes, symbolizing their unity and camaraderie. In a heartwarming flashback, Twig officially joins Hilda and Johanna's family, solidifying their bond. As Trollberg prepares for the Winter Festival, Hilda, Frida, and David set up a broth stand to earn money for gifts. They stumble upon the Yule Lads, tasked with punishing naughty children who join them at the festival. Meanwhile, Trevor plots against Hilda, goaded by his mother's disdain for her. Despite a successful broth sale, Trevor and his friends disrupt their stand, leading the Yule Lads to mistakenly believe Trollberg harbors naughty inhabitants. Hilda defends Trevor's mother, but the Yule Lads retaliate against Trevor's group. The festive atmosphere turns chaotic as tensions escalate between the Yule Lads and the mischievous children. As tensions rise between Hilda and Johanna over teabag habits, Johanna shares a chilling tale of Gryla, an ogress who devours naughty children. Meanwhile, the Yule Lads target Trevor and his mother. The next day, Hilda notices Trevor's absence and learns from Frida about his mother's closed stand. Concerned, she confides in Kurt about her mother's actions, inadvertently marking Johanna as naughty in the eyes of the Yule Lads. Despite their successful day at the market, Hilda worries about affording a gift for her mom. Their evening takes a dire turn when Hilda discovers Johanna missing and uncovers a dark truth about Grella's involvement with the Yule Lads. Faced with Grella's imminent threat, Hilda seeks out the Yule Lads to negotiate for her mother's safety. Confronting them, she uncovers their tragic past as former naughty children forced into servitude. Together, they devise a plan to offer Grilla the Sparrow Scout's broth instead of human sacrifices, relinquishing the recipe to save their loved ones. Grilla accepts the substitute, sparing Trevor and Johanna. As the Winter Festival commences and the Sonstensil tree blooms, signaling the end of Grilla's menace, Trollberg rejoices in relief. David surprises Hilda with a snow glow gift for Johanna, showcasing their enduring friendship and the spirit of the season. Grilla retreats, allowing Peace to return to the city until her next awakening. After accidentally hitching a ride in Hilda's backpack, the Tide Mice find themselves in the company of Gil Jones, a delivery man for Jorts. Gil encounters the mice and unwittingly becomes their new host. Under the mice's influence, Gil experiences a remarkable series of promotions, ultimately ascending to the position of CEO within a single day. Meanwhile, Jorts undergoes rapid expansion, transforming into a multinational corporation. As Gil's success surges, the Tide Mice continue to proliferate within the company, infecting other employees and consolidating their control behind the scenes. As the Committee of Trees threatens Hilda with punishment for the Tide Mice incident, Tilde intervenes, delaying the decision. Seizing the opportunity, the trio sneaks out to formulate a plan. 
they decide to capture the tide mice and banish them from the witch's tower. However, their search in Hilda's room proves futile as the mice are gone. Suddenly, Hilda exhibits signs of soul-taking, signaling a dire situation. Seeking answers, it turned to Kaizen, who reveals Jort's unprecedented success under Gil's leadership. Hilda realizes Gil's connection to the tide mice, suggesting a deeper involvement in their mischief. Time grows short as they race to uncover the truth and thwart the mice's sinister agenda. In a race against time, Hilda and her friends, accompanied by Keiza, confront the tide mice at Jort's. Armed with vacuum cleaners, they strive to capture the rapidly multiplying rodents. While David, Kaiza, and Freda handle the new arrivals, Hilda ventures to the CEO's office to apprehend the original mice. Despite their escape into the ventilation system, Gil's clever use of jorts lures them out. With the tied mice in custody, they return to Witch's Tower. Despite Tildy and the committee's ongoing dispute, Hilda avoids punishment in the void but endures a day with mouse whiskers. The witches collaborate to cast a disenchantment spell, banishing the tied mice for good. The ordeal concludes with Gil resuming his role as a delivery man the next day. Alfer is shocked to find himself evicted from his home overnight, replaced by a new elf named Alvin assigned to take over his role as Trollberg correspondent. Hilda devises a plan to thwart the delegation sent to bring Alfer back to the northern counties by tricking them into leaving without him. They recruit Agnes from the Lost Clan to pose as Alfer, but the plan falls apart when she loses her temper. Eventually, Alfer reveals himself and attempts to flee. In a bid to save Alfer, Hilda fabricates a story about mythical threats to Trollberg, staging a fake attack with the Lost Clan's help. Chased by the delegation and the Lost Clan, Alfer seeks refuge at the farmer's market, causing chaos as the unseen elves disrupt the stands. Seeking cover, Alfer hides in a lighthouse decoration, joined by Alvin and others. Hilda rescues Alfer and Alvin as Deputy Gerda intervenes, taking them to safety patrol HQ. Gerda plans to interrogate the spirits, but Alfer convinces her they are part of the spirit's safety patrol. He persuades Gerda to release them by claiming authority over the rogue spirits. They return to the harbor where Alvin reveals Alfer's reports are accurate, sparing Alfer from being replaced. With the situation resolved, Alfer returns home while Alvin departs with the delegation. Hilda, David, and Frida work on Frida's witch homework, but Hilda is more interested in practicing magic than studying it. Freda's attempt at an invisibility spell goes wrong, turning a jort into elf-sized shorts. To complete the next spell, they need dust from the Trollberg Castle ruins, prompting Hilda to volunteer to fetch it. However, Johanna has planned a family game night, causing tension when Hilda insists on going to Frida's. A news report about troll bonfires worsens the situation, leading to a heated argument between Hilda and Johanna. Frustrated, Hilda wishes she were a troll to live freely in the wild. Determined to visit Frida, Hilda courses Tantu into helping her by threatening to reveal his mistake to Johanna. However, Johanna intervenes as they enter Nowhere Space, causing all three to be transported to the outside world's Nowhere Space. They find themselves in the Stone Forest, a vast cave with tree-like pillars. With Tantu unlikely to find them, they must find their own way out. Spending the night in the forest, they seek an exit the next day, leading them to a chamber filled with trolls. Hiding among the belongings carried by a troll, they are unwittingly taken out of the forest to a mountain campfire. Separated from Twig, Hilda and Johanna find themselves trapped in the troll's lair. While Johanna searches for an alternative exit, Hilda explores and discovers a hatch seal with a padlock. Using her wits, she tricks a rock-chewing slug into breaking the padlock, allowing them to enter the lair. However, they are discovered by the two-headed troll. Just in time, Hilda opens the hatch, providing Johanna and Twig with a means of escape. Despite their freedom, they are now lost once again in the stone forest. After finding refuge with a female troll and her child, Hilda and Johanna receive hospitality and assistance. The female troll offers them warmth, refreshments, and even aids them with a map and a magical guide to help them navigate the stone forest. However, their journey is hindered once more by the two-headed troll's interference. Despite Twig's valiant attempt to protect them, the situation escalates, leading to a confrontation between the trolls. As Hilda and Johanna seek refuge in a tunnel filled with rock-chewing slugs, they encounter a new threat in the form of a gigantic slug. Barely escaping a cave-in caused by the creature, they continue their desperate bid for freedom. As Hilda, Johanna, and Twig find a way out of the collapsed cave, they reconcile their differences and strengthen their bond. Meanwhile, David, Frida, and Alpha search for Hilda and Johanna, but Frida's attempt to retrace their steps leads to getting lost. Nearby, Eric Alberg and Gerda Gustav encounter trouble when their zeppelin crashes after a confrontation with Wafs startled by Frida. Stranded in the woods with Frida injured, they face a challenging situation. Stranded in the woods, Eric and Gerda work to build a makeshift blip, 
while Frida tries to protect them from trolls using magic, inadvertently turning Eric into a bug. Gerda temporarily traps him in a jar for safety. The group seeks shelter and builds a campfire, where Frida confides in Gerda about their search for Hilda and their distrust of the safety patrol. Another troll appears, but David's offer of jorts appeases him, and he joins the group at the campfire, surprising Gerda with his unexpected friendliness. Tanta returns and informs Alpha of Hilda and Johanna's location, prompting Alpha to borrow Cedric from the Lost Clan to find them. Meanwhile, in the woods, Gerda, Frida, and David survive the night, and the petrified troll crumbles as the morning arrives. Alpha locates the group and informs them of Hilda and Johanna's proximity. As Hilda and Johanna escape the caves, the two-headed troll pursues them, but his petrified form rolls off the mountain's edge. Frida, David, and Gerda rescue Johanna while Hilda and Twig are saved by the White Waff. Back in Trollberg, Gerda safely delivers Hilda and Johanna home, where Hilda gives Frida the dust. Later, Frida uses it to restore Eric Alberg to human form at Safety Patrol HQ. However, Alberg's ego annoys Gerda, prompting her to escort Frida and David out. As Hilda and Johanna settle in, they find the stone figures altered, and the next day, Hilda wakes up in the troll's home as one of them, while a human version of the troll child has replaced her. Season 3, Hilda, Johanna, and their companions embark on a summer trip to Tofoden following an invitation from Hilda's great aunt Astrid. During a train journey, Alpha and Tantu engage in games while the others relax. Upon arrival, they are greeted warmly by Astrid and her pet Lone. Astrid performs rituals and reveals she can see Alpha, surprising Hilda. As they explore Tofoden, Astrid explains its transformation into a tourist destination and its traditions, including horseshoes on houses. Hilda Nevis is a peculiar house adorned with numerous horse shoes, unaware of being observed from within. Hilda and her friends visit her great aunt Astrid in Tofoten, a touristy town. Astrid's eccentricities intrigue them, especially her collection of lucky charms and encounters with the Puka, a shapeshifter. As Astrid departs for her mail round, she tasks Johanna with returning a stolen waff egg to its cave. Johanna, Hilda, and their friends embark on the journey, encountering the Puka's mischief along the way. Hilda's quick thinking thwarts his attempts to reclaim the egg. Meanwhile, Johanna senses a foreboding presence in the woods, hinting at further mysteries to uncover in Tofoten. After returning the waff egg to its nest in the cave, Hilda and her friends are accidentally stranded on a platform when the waff awakens. To escape, they ride on the waff's backs, soaring through the clouds, which brings them joy, although Alpha and David are less enthusiastic. Back at Astrid's house, Johanna reminisces about her youth and riding waff, prompting Hilda to express gratitude for the family-like bond they share. Later, Hilda discovers panpipes in a book about Tofoten fairies in her bedroom. Hilda wakes from a troubling dream and arrives late for breakfast. Her friends, Frida and David, suggest souvenir shopping, while Hilda, fascinated by the possibility of fairies in Tofoten, sets out to find them. Despite conflicting descriptions from locals, she learns about the fear surrounding fairies believed to abduct children to fairy country. Undeterred, Hilda's curiosity leads her to encounter Annis, a fairy in a beautiful meadow. Hilda's quest for fairies leads her to a disappointing discovery at a tourist site. Meanwhile, she pursues another lead at a house adorned with horseshoes, only to encounter resistance from a grumpy resident named Jonas. Astrid intervenes, dismissing the notion of fairies as mere tourist tales. That evening, the group enjoys a camping trip, prompting Hilda to suggest relocating to Tilfoden, which Johanna declines. Curious about her mother's past, Hilda probes into why Johanna left Tofoten and chose their cabin instead, receiving cryptic responses. Later, Hilda witnesses Astrid engaging in a mysterious ritual, revealing a secretive side to her great-aunt. Shocked by the discovery, Hilda retreats unnoticed. Hilda leads her friends to the hill, suspecting it to be a genuine fairy mound guarded by Astrid. David disappears after Hilda tamper with a charm, causing concern among the group. Meanwhile, Astrid and Johanna discuss past tensions including Johanna's unresolved resentment about Astrid staying behind in Tofoden. As the fog thickens, Hilda, Frida, and David reunite, encountering peculiar mushroom-like creatures. Johanna, informed by the Puka, rushes to the scene, accompanied by Astrid. She confronts Astrid for withholding information about the fairy mound, sparking tension between them. Astrid leads the rescue effort, pulling Frida and David from the fairy mound while Hilda encounters mysterious figures. Back at Astrid's house, Johanna remains upset, revealing her past experience with fairy mounds. Astrid explains the danger they narrowly avoided in fairy country's outer reaches, thanks to protective charms. Johanna decides to leave Tofoten, fearing further encounters with Fairy Isle and with tensions lingering they depart for home. Hilda suffers a nightmare, prompting her to seek a replacement charm from Astrid, who reveals it originates from the Feratok tree in the Forest of Knot. 
Accompanied by Twig, they find the tree and encounter Woodman, its protector. He expresses frustration over the tree's exploitation for charms and wands. Currently, he's repairing the tree from damage caused by giant squirrels. During a scuffle with one such squirrel, Twig chases it into the tree, prompting Hilda and Woodman to follow. Hilda and Twig find themselves in the past, witnessing a village threatened by giants. Learning of a captive giant named Drib, Hilda seeks to intervene despite knowing it's an alternate timeline. Meeting called Drib's sister, Hilda hears of the conflict between humans and giants. With Woodman's assurance that her actions won't affect her own time, Hilda resolves to help. Confronting the giant slayer, Halver, she discovers his plan to attack the giants. Unable to reason with him, Hilda attempts to free Drib but is thwarted when Woodman is mistaken for a demon and captured. While trying to free Drib, Hilda is knocked unconscious. After waking up, Hilda witnesses Kald's attempt to free her brother, facing off against Halver's soldiers. Another giant, Haldor, aids Kald and together they disrupt the village's defenses. Despite Hilda's pleas for peace, tensions escalate. Hilda catapults herself onto Kald, urging her to seek peace. However, the giants decide to leave due to widespread human fear. Returning to the village, Hilda finds Woodman captive and faces Halver's aggression. In the ensuing struggle, Halver accidentally sets the village ablaze, including the Ferratok tree. Hilda empathizes with Halver's pain but highlights the accidental nature of the giant's destruction. Unlike Halver's destructive response, Hilda seeks reconciliation and understanding. Halver finally sees the truth and releases Drib, who helps extinguish the fires. The Woodman and the village are saved, the giants still depart the earth. Hilda and Woodman rush back to the Ferratok tree amidst the blaze managing to return to the present before it's consumed entirely. The disappointed Woodman reassures Hilda of her impact as the giants will remember her. He plans to plant a new tree and Hilda receives wood to craft a new charm. As she works on it, the cloaked figures from her nightmare observe her from outside. In the Laughing Merman episode, Hilda, Frida, and David join their Sparrow Scout troop for a rafting trip to earn the Fish Finder River Badge. Assigned to Lee's an introverted scout, the trio aims to avoid their reputation for odd adventures. However, David's blunder with the map leads them astray, encountering a talking merman named Eugene pursued by a sea serpent. After a series of challenges, they end up trapped in Eugene's cave. Eugene, craving an audience, plans to keep them captive. David brokers a deal with Eugene. If they come enjoy his performance, they can leave. Only Louise withstands Eugene's antics, convincing him to give the others another chance. Tasked with finding the real exit from the cave, the group relies on Louise's astute observations to discern the correct path. Despite Eugene's attempts to mislead them, Louise's sharp insight leads them to success. Upon their escape, Eugene, realizing he can return to the ocean, releases them. Louise admits to hiding the map, seeking an adventure with the freaky friends. Hilda appreciates finding acceptance for their quirks. Continuing their journey, Eugene, at Louise's urging, plays a prank on the scouts who dismiss them before heading back to the sea. The story kicks off with a man named Anders hastily boarding a ferry bound for Trollberg, barely scraping together the fare. His destination becomes clear when he reveals a pendant with a baby photo of Hilda to the captain. Meanwhile, at Hilda's house, Johanna prepares to go shopping with Alfer while David and Frida visit. Unexpectedly, Anders appears at the doorstep, revealing himself as Hilda's long-lost father. Hilda, thrilled by his return, introduces him to her friends who are shocked as Hilda had never mentioned him before. Anders suggests taking Hilda and her friends out for lunch, promising to have her home by five. Skeptical of his reliability, Johanna reluctantly agrees. Over lunch at the Salty Maiden, Anders regales Hilda's friends with tales of her adventurous spirit, hinting at his own past adventures. Their meal is interrupted by the arrival of a shady character known as the Polecat, who recruits Anders for a job. Hilda impulsively volunteers her father, and the Polecat accepts, tasking them with retrieving something from the castle ruins before sunset. With no car of his own, the polecat lends Anders his truck, which raises concerns from David and Frida due to its suspicious appearance. Ignoring their apprehensions, Hilda eagerly joins her father on the mission, cherishing the opportunity to bond with him. As they set off on their adventure, Hilda's excitement outweighs any doubts about the task at hand, blissfully enjoying the chance to spend time with her long-lost father. As Hilda and Anders head to the castle ruins, their journey hits a snat when the truck gets a flat tire. While changing it, Twig discovers a petrified troll with a bell around its nose, which Hilda decides to bury. Reflecting on past adventures, Hilda shares the story of when she was turned into a troll, evoking sympathy from Anders. To lift Hilda's spirits, Anders lets her drive the truck for a while before they reach the ruins, where they enjoy the sunset together. Anders suggests a camping trip for the following weekend, deepening their bond. 
Back in Trollberg, Johanna grows concerned when Hilda fails to return home. Learning of their whereabouts from David, she sets out for the ruins herself. Meanwhile, the awakened troll also heads there. At the ruins, Hilda and Anders encounter Gunther and Garth, associates of the polecat, attempting to retrieve a chest of gold from a hole. Anders assists with a makeshift pulley as they haul the chest up, learning it belongs to a troll's horde. Refusing to steal from the troll, Hilda and Anders face off against Gunther and Garth. Johanna arrives, disapproving of the situation, just as the troll appears to reclaim its hoard. In the chaos, the troll causes Hilda to drop the truck keys, which Gunther and Garth seize before fleeing. Left to confront the troll, Anders sacrifices himself to save his family. Cornered in the dungeon, Anders is seemingly taken by shadowy figures, leaving Hilda and Johanna in shock. Believing her father to be eaten, Hilda searches fruitlessly with Johanna, who fears Anders has fled again. Disheartened by her father's apparent abandonment, Hilda returns home with Johanna, grappling with the sudden disappearance of Anders. As Trollberg is engulfed in rain, Hilda and Johanna, waiting for the bus, experience a moment of mistaken identity when Hilda believes she sees her father, only to realize it's a stranger. Still harboring bitterness over his disappearance, Hilda's mood sours. That evening, Hilda attempts to play the pan pipes she brought from Tofoten, much to the dismay of Alfer, Twig, Johanna, and Tantu. When Johanna investigates the noise, she notices Hilda still carries the charm from on Astrid, prompting memories of Astrid's overprotectiveness. Hilda jokingly suggests it runs in the family, earning a stern reaction from Johanna. The next day, Johanna purchases a second-hand car, suggesting a camping road trip to celebrate. As they journey into the wilderness, Hilda hopes to emulate her father by driving, but is denied. Despite a few setbacks with the car's engine, they enjoy exploring until the vehicle breaks down. Utilizing her Sparrow Scout skills, Johanna repairs the car, but decides to camp for the night due to the late hour. That night, Hilda introduces Johanna to the Pan Pipes, discovering Johanna's hidden talent as she plays a song that mysteriously causes flowers to bloom and stir something in a nearby lake. The following day, they stumble upon the lake, which oddly resembles Johanna's past artwork, sparking theories of subconscious memories. Twig discovers a peculiar wooden figure caught in a fishing net, prompting Hilda to collect it along with a net filled with similar figures. As Hilda swings from a tree on an island in the lake, a monstrous spider frog emerges, seizing her and fleeing. Johanna and Twig pursue, navigating the beast's tree-climbing abilities to a cave where it ensnares Hilda and Silk and reveals its intent to devour them both after trapping Johanna. Inside the cave, Johanna and Twig struggle against the webs until Johanna retrieves a saw from the car, freeing them. As they attempt to escape, a spider frog reappears, prompting Johanna's realization that Hilda inadvertently released the creature by collecting its wooden charms. Empowering Hilda to drive, Johanna tosses the charms at the spider frog, momentarily deterring it before it leaps onto the car, forcing a halt. The spider frog swallows Hilda and Johanna, only to regurgitate them upon realizing humans upset its stomach. Surprised by their friendship offer, it recalls encountering Johanna in her childhood, when she and her parents imprisoned it in the lake, though Johanna has no recollection. Indistinct about its origins, the spider frog departs, leaving Johanna and Hilda to reflect on its enigmatic nature. Returning home, Hilda muses on the love Johanna's parents had for her, reflected in their actions against the spider frog. As night falls, Hilda's radio unexpectedly broadcasts a mysterious signal, sparking her belief that it's a coded message from her missing father. Meanwhile, Frida is roused by her house Nis, who seeks help as his timer has been stolen by another Nis, revealing a widespread trend of Nis stealing from each other in Trollberg. Frida enlists David's aid and proposes a town hall meeting to address the issue. Though initially preoccupied with her father's potential distress signal, Hilda eventually joins the effort after Tantu, a Nis, takes her radio into nowhere space where the signals intensify. However, another Nis pilfers the radio, prompting Hilda to reconsider Frida's plan. The trio alongside Alfer and Tantu mobilizes to organize the town hall meeting, enticing Nis attendants with promises of free food. Hilda seizes the opportunity to inquire about her father but receives no leads. They secure Scout Hall as the venue and prepare diligently, facing initial skepticism about Nis' participation until they begin to trickle in. Despite Frida's efforts to maintain order, the town hall meeting among the Nis devolves into chaos, culminating in a massive brawl. Hilda reclaims her radio amidst the melee, only to discover broadcasts from Victoria Van Gale, dispelling her hopes of hearing from her father. Disheartened, Hilda realizes she made a grave mistake, soaring her relationship with Frida. The next morning, Hilda's gesture of allowing Tantu to keep the radio sparks an idea to create a lending library, fostering cooperation among the Nis and resolving their conflicts. With the Nis dilemma settled, 
The trio decides to enjoy themselves, but Tantu's discovery of the radio program about a man seeking his daughter reignites Hilda's determination to find her father. Alfred's return and his revelation about the radio broadcasts originating from Tilfoten combined with Victoria's warning about hooded figures leads Hilda to conclude her father may be in the fairy mound. Determined to rescue her father, Hilda enlists Frida and David's aid, with Alfer and Tantu reluctantly assisting them to reach the train station. As they depart, Johanna arrives, unaware of their plans but demanding answers from Tantu and Alfer about the kids' whereabouts. Upon returning to Tofoden, Hilda, Frida, and David head straight for the fairy mound. Removing the protective charms, Hilda and Twig enter while David and Frida stand guard outside. In Trollberg, Johanna, unable to reach Astrid due to the Puka's distractions, decides to travel to Tofoten herself, forbidding Tantu and Alfer from joining her. As Hilda and Twig navigate the borderlands, they make little progress until Hilda realizes a charm from Astrid is anchoring them. Breaking it, they find themselves on a seashore, where a boat approaches and takes them deeper until it's caught in a net. Pulled ashore, they encounter Anders and Victoria Van Gale. Anders recounts being pulled into the realm when a troll threatened him, where he was found by Victoria. Together, they constructed a radio transmitter in hopes of contacting the outside world. Surprised by Hilda's arrival through the fairy mound, they warn her of the flying one-eyed mushrooms, which could attract unwanted attention. Despite the circumstances, Hilda is grateful to Victoria for caring for her father, while Victoria finds solace in fairy country's mysteries and technology such as the tower she's studying. As Hilda and Anders prepare to leave fairy country, Victoria opts to stay behind. However, their departure is thwarted when an eye alerts fairy isle, prompting the appearance of the isle in two cloaked figures accompanied by massive waves in the ocean. Despite the challenges, Hilda and Anders reach the borderlands. Meanwhile, outside the fairy mound, Johanna arrives, but David and Frida prevent her from entering. When Hilda signals, they attempt to dig her out, but the mound resists. Frida opens a portal with her magic, straining to keep it open. Hilda, Anders, and Twig escape, but Hilda learns her mother entered the mound to find her. Despite Frida's collapse, Hilda jumps back in to search for her mother before the mound collapses, sealing off fairy country forever. Anders digs for Hilda, while David takes Frida and Astrid's house for care. Astrid provides instructions for Frida's recovery before departing. Meanwhile, Hilda finds herself on Fairy Isle with a young human girl searching for her parents. They encounter various creatures but also witness a decaying section of the island. The girl, oddly knowledgeable about the island, struggles with memory loss. After encountering a fairy woman whom the girl believes is her mother, Astrid intervenes, warning Hilda of the dangers. Despite Astrid's efforts to stop her, Hilda follows the girl, eventually finding a cave resembling her old house. Inside, they meet the girl's parents, who reveal her to be an amnesiac Johanna. Johanna accuses her parents and Astrid of abandonment and memory manipulation. In response, her parents share their story. Finium, Astrid's brother, and Lydia, Johanna's mother, share their poignant tale with Hilda and Johanna. In their youth, Finium and Lydia fell in love and had Johanna, but a deal with the fairy entity compelled them to leave her behind with Astrid and reside on Fairy Isle permanently. Astrid, at their behest, cast a memory spell on Johanna to shield her from the pain of abandonment. With the truth revealed, Astrid dispels the memory spell, flooding Johanna's mind with forgotten memories. Thrilled to discover her fairy heritage, Hilda is eager to share the news with her friends. However, their presence in fairy country breaches the pact, condemning them to remain on the island forever. Johannan accepts this fate, finding solace in the simplicity of life with Hilda. However, Hilda yearns for adventure beyond the stagnant island. Finium and Lydia offer a solution. A watchtower capable of glimpsing the human world and pulling individuals into fairy country. They use it previously to monitor Hilda and rescue Anders. Meanwhile, in the human world, Freda realizes Twig's potential to rescue Hilda and forms a psychic link with him summoning his herd to aid in the rescue. As Hilda and Johanna navigate the island's challenges, including a carnivorous plant and an army of eyes, Frida amplifies Twig's howl, summoning the deer foxes to their aid. With their help, Hilda and Johanna traverse the final obstacle, a chasm before escaping fairy country. Back in the human world, Astrid convinces the fairy entity to spare Johanna's life, offering her own in exchange. Victoria Van Gale makes a surprising sacrifice, offering herself to the entity instead, ensuring Astrid's return, and subtly manipulating her fate. With Johanna saved and Astrid returned, the group rejoices and returns to Trollberg. Anders settles into an apartment, honoring his promise to stay for a while, while Hilda rejoins her friends in the annual bird parade. With her family and friends by her side, Hilda embraces the familiar warmth of Trollberg, knowing her grandparents watch over her from fairy country. 
So that will be it from us. If you enjoyed the video, then do let us know about your favorite episode of the series. Also, leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for similar content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at the next one.